Hello, hello, viewers and listeners of Agama Media. I welcome all of you who have subscribed to the channel. And hey, if you've not done so, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload our videos. Today, we will be talking about how you can study in Norway for free. That means you can travel to Norway easily with your visa approved because you have to meet only few requirements in order to secure your visa to travel to Norway for further studies. That will be the presentation for today. So please stay tuned and enjoy the presentation. Completing a university degree is considered to be an expensive endeavor and tuition fees are usually making up the bulk part of the cost. This is not the case in Norway where public funding secures free education for both Norwegian and international students. Remember, majority of Norwegian universities and state university colleges are publicly funded and as a result, Norwegian government considers accessibility to higher education for all as an important part of the Norwegian society. And as a result, Norwegian public institutions do not charge tuition fees. This also applies to international students, no matter their country of origin. So if you come from Ghana, you come from Nigeria, Togo, Botswana, Egypt, wherever, South Africa, wherever you find yourself, Kenya. And if you go to Asian countries, wherever you come from, you don't pay tuition fee at all public universities in Norway. Remember, it's all public universities in Norway. So if you apply to private, you will pay tuition fee. It's for public universities in Norway. And I'm going to walk you through some of the universities that give you the access for free tuition in Norway. And then I always say because this is a unique opportunity because obtaining your degree usually come with very high cost. And one of the reasons why Norway now has become an attractive hub is that foreign students do not pay tuition fee. Comparatively, if you look at United Kingdom, you'll be paying on annual basis 14 to 15,000 pounds as a foreign student. And if you come to America now, it's around 15 to 20,000 US dollars. So that is a very huge amount. So because Norway do not charge fees, a lot of international students now are moving to this country. So our researchers delve into this and decided to share with our community so that if you are looking at where to further your education, no way could be the way because you pay no tuition fee at all public universities. And if you have research into some of the universities that you have, some of the courses that are taught in English, you know, they speak Norwegian language. So most of the courses are at bachelor level are taught in Norwegian, but few of them offer English taught courses. But with master's degree, we'll walk you through some of the universities. Uh, so if you want to further your studies at master's level or PhD level, you can look into it because of this opportunity. But one thing, I want the community members to know is that Norway is considered to be very high cost country in terms of living expenditure. So because it's high cost country, living expenses are high. And as an international applicant from outside Europe, you have to also consider that living condition in Norway is a little bit high. So you have to prepare adequately for that. So we look at some of the public universities that you can study in Norway for free. We go to number one, University of Stavanger. If you go to the website, you will see master's programs that they are taught in English. And then if you, it falls within your field of specialization, you can put in your application. And then you go to this university, I would prefer to call it the Oslo Met, the Oslo Metropolitan University. Uh, if you go there, there are courses that are taught in English language. You can also apply. And the University of Adja, that one, they also have master's and PhD programs. So these universities, the number one, Stavanger, the Oslo Met, the Oslo Metropolitan University, 
the University of Adja, they all have masters and PhD programs and few bachelor degrees that are taught in English because you have to also consider the course that you are going to enroll if it's also taught in English because if it's Norwegian, then you have to also prepare to study the language before you get access or admitted into the program. Number four is the Nord University. There you have a lot of masters and PED programs that are taught in English free of charge. So you can look into that without paying tuition fee. University of Oslo also has masters and PED programs that you can enroll for free without paying tuition fee. University of Belgium. Belgium also has masters and PED programs for no tuition. And then the Arctic University of Norway also has masters and PhD programs you can look into. I have also indicated the link or have given the link to access these universities and I'll post them under the description of this video. So you just hit the uh, link to take you straight to the website of these universities. And if possibly you can look into it and then try to put in your application and then we have norwegian university of science and technology there you can also get masters and PED programs if you are interested and it falls in your area of specialization you also have the norwegian university of life sciences as number nine you can also look into that and then the university of southeastern norway they also have very good programs that you can enroll in remember Usually the application for admission opens in October. So we are in September. We thought it wise to share this with you. You need your academic transcript. You need your reference letters. You need uh, your SWASI or senior high level certificate. And then you need proficiency in English language. Remember, if you had your masters you had your bachelor's you have your high school education in english language just go to your english department they will issue you with a proficiency in english certification you don't need to write in the professional english examination you know you have to just go to the department of english in where you got your bachelor degree where you had your masters they will issue that to you and then you attach that as part of your document for submission. So when you also have your WASI or senior high certificate, that is even enough to show them that if only the courses were taught in English, that means you are eloquent, you can speak fluently, and you can defend and write everything in English. So they will give you the admission so that is the 10th university university of southeastern norway you can also look into their website and then explore the course that they have if they fall within your area of specialization then you look into it so what i will say is that we have given you 10 universities that you can look into and explore these are public universities in norway that do not take tuition fees the do not charge tuition fees and these are schools that offer english taught courses so you can look into it and then apply if you want to follow further your studies in uh, at, at master's level or at phd level you can look into it and what i will say is that norway is considered very expensive country so if you are preparing irrespective of the uh, no tuition fee you have to also make sure you have the financial muscle to 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 rent apartment and then to take care of yourself we would bring another video on how you transition to norway in terms of getting your admission after you get the admission how you process your visa and what goes into the package for submission for visa application your visa application to norway and if you are lucky and you get your visa how you transition from your home country to norway so for today we came up with 10 public universities in norway that take no tuition fee and they offer taught courses in 
English language that you can also take advantage of. So please, before I end this video, I'll plead with you to kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you've not done so, hit the notification bell and then we will always update you with more videos. Thank you for watching. My name is Felis Etwaini. Hello, hello viewers and listeners of Agama Media. I welcome all of you who have subscribed to our channel. And please, if you've not done so, kindly subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload our videos. Today, we'll be talking about studying in Canada for free. We have received a lot of messages and emails from our viewers and subscribers on how they can secure funding for further studies in Canada. As a result of that, our team of researchers have delved into it and we would like to present to you our findings. We have identified some investors that could grant you the needed financial support for you to further your studies in Canada. Stay tuned and enjoy today's presentation. Okay, honestly speaking, there are no tuition-free investors in Canada. But for international and domestic students who want to enjoy tuition free education the best thing you can do is to apply for fully funded scholarship that covers tuition and allowance so you can only enjoy this package by applying for fully funded scholarship that will cover your tuition and allowance and there are individuals there are a charity organization there are institutions in canada that come together in order to support prospective applicants in securing such scholarship packages in order to enjoy free tuition and allowance for further studies in Canada. So these scholarships come in different forms. You can get bursaries, you can get fully funded scholarship or partial, and then you can also get fellowship and other form. But we want to concentrate only on the fully funded scholarship for our viewers and our subscribers to assess this funding option in order to be debt free when they graduate from school so we will talk about these universities that we have identified and how best you can also tap into these funding that are available then the university we will talk about number one is the saint mary's university and this university provides series of fully funded scholarship for international students who aim to pursue undergraduate degree at this institution. Remember, they have eight different scholarships for international students seeking to uh, pursue undergraduate degree, and all these scholarships are renewable. You can hold on to this scholarship till the end of your program, as long as you keep up with the requirement of this scholarship. We have number two, Concordia University. This university has a very good scholarship package named the Concordia Presidential Scholarship which is for international students seeking to pursue degree in any of the undergraduate programs. Students who demonstrate academic excellence, leadership skills, and motivation to make the global community better are highly suitable for winning this scholarship. And the award is granted annually. This award is very, very competitive. Aside the tuition, it covers book allowance and living expenses. So you can imagine this scholarship the package that it comes with makes it very very competitive so with the concordia presidential scholarship you have to put in a very strong application because it's very competitive university number three we have the southern Alberta institute of technology this university has set aside five million canadian dollars annually for scholarship to international students in all their programs these awards are given to incoming students who demonstrate academic, academic excellence, financial need, involvement in their various communities, and other areas of success. These are applicants who are most likely to win if you have these uh, qualities. And the scholarship is also renewable for up to four years, as long as you maintain the renewal requirement of the scholarship. And this cover tuition, and most of the universities also have this scholarship so you can look into the southern Alberta 
Institute of Technology scholarship that they have. Number three is the University of Toronto. This university makes it to their list of tuition free universities in Canada for international students because they have a scholarship they call it Leicester B. Pearson International Scholarship Program. And this scholarship is one of the best because it's fully funded, going to cover tuition, uh, books, incidental fees, full residence support for four years, which make the winner of this scholarship uh, enjoy tuition free in the University of Toronto. And this scholarship is awarded annually to incoming students who want to pursue undergraduate degree at the University of Toronto. And the award is mainly targeted exceptional students who are international. So the target is for exceptional international students. We have the University of Calgary. The University of Calgary has a lot of government and individually funded scholarship for both undergrad and graduate international. So if you are a graduate student, look at this university, University of Calgary, and the scholarship that they have are fully funded and they have partial. They also have fellowship bursaries and they have one scholarship that they call it the Venia Canada Graduate Scholarship which is meant for only graduate students and is renewable for up to three years of graduate study. This scholarship is government funded one and provided by various universities across Canada. Few universities get this chance. And if you are a graduate student and you want to look at this university, University of Calgary, they have the Venia Canada Graduate Scholarship, the VCGS Scholarship. And if you are an undergraduate student, you are lucky here because they also have University of Calgary International Entrance Scholarship, which is also fully funded for undergraduates. So this university is a hotkey, University of Calgary for both the graduate and undergraduate applicants. We have the University of Waterloo. University of Waterloo is one of the schools that offers international students uh, scholarship to uh, enjoy their studies in Canada. They have a scholarship they call Pierre Elu Tradu Foundation Scholarship. It's French, forgive me for my French. And they also have the Venia Canada Graduate Scholarship. Uh, so if you want to further your studies at master's level, at graduate level, look at the University of Waterloo. They also have those scholarships and you can also search into it. We will leave a link for you to assess these universities at the description section of this video. We have the Carlton University. This is also a top-notch university in Canada, and they also have very good scholarship, and they have made education easy because they have prestigious scholarship that is renewable. You can also tap into this. Go to the website of this university if you are an international student, and they have scholarship packages for international students. You also have the York University. The York University has scholarships that are completely funded, which allows international students to study at no cost. If you are an international student, hey, this is also a trump card for you to look at. The York University, they also have fully funded scholarship for you. And these scholarship, uh, I tell you, they call it the York University Automatic Entrance Scholarship. They also have an International Entrance Scholarship of Distinction, and they have the Global Leader of Tomorrow Award for International Students. So you can look for yourself. They have very good scholarship. Look, the York University Automatic Entrance Scholarship, International Entrance Scholarship of Distinction, and the Global Leader of Tomorrow Award. So if you are, you are an international student, this is a trump card. You have to look at it. And the scholarship for the international student are good for undergraduate at the University of New York. There are other funding for graduate students. So go to the website of the York University as well, and then you get all that you need. We have the University of British Columbia. The University of British Columbia provides three prestigious need and merit-based scholarship programs and it's only for international scholars. And these are fully funded, and if you get to maintain the renewal requirement, you will be enjoying tuition free because 
this is a fully funded scholarship for international students. Look at this university, the University of British Columbia. You will see for yourself that pursuing and getting a preferred bachelor degree at this top-notch university without having to worry about paying tuition fee. This is so good. So if you are uh, an undergrad or a graduate level, look at the University of British Columbia. They also have that. And then I uh, think that brings to an end of this video. We have given you the universities that you need in order to research into it and make sure you put in your application. So you will be debt free for your studies in Canada. We have given you the fully funded scholarship options in Canada. And as we have mentioned, the University of Calgary is one of the top notch in Canada. We also talk of the University of British Columbia, the University of York, the University of Carton. All these are universities that you can look into it. I think what I will say is put in the application, go to the website of these universities, research, 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 and look at the scholarship session. You will be lucky and fortunate to secure your scholarship to attend these universities at no cost. Please, I'll say thank you for watching our videos. We honestly appreciate all the support. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please kindly subscribe to our channel. A lot goes into this presentation. So we only want you to appreciate us by subscribing to our channel. We thank you very much. And we say we are so grateful to have a community that they send us messages and give us feedback on all that we do. If you think there's anything that we have to look into, research into it, let us know. We will do that. My name is Felix Atwani. On behalf of Agama Media, I will see hello viewers and listeners of agama media i welcome all of you who have subscribed to our channel and hey if you've not done so kindly subscribe to our channel hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload our videos today is a special day it's a special day because i'll be talking about a scholarship i was awarded in the year 2014 for my second master's degree in urban and regional planning in the united kingdom I have tagged this scholarship as the most lucrative scholarship around the globe. I will tell you why. Because if you live in London, you will be taking home almost £17,000 as living allowance. But if you live outside London, you will be taking home almost £14,000 as living allowance in 12 months. And it comes with return flight ticket, medical insurance and a lot of benefits. So. After the presentation, you will understand why I said it's the most lucrative scholarships around the globe. Okay, it is important to note that studying in the UK will give you the opportunity to experience a new culture, network with students and professionals around the globe, and gain skills to help further your career development. And there are various financial support available to individuals or students who want to further the education in the United Kingdom. And you can get scholarship, grant, bursaries, fellowships to further your education. But for the purposes of today's video, we want to concentrate on the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. And the Commonwealth Secretariat also has a number of scholarships, including the Commonwealth Professional Fellowship. If you want to look into it, you can look into that. They also have Commonwealth Distance Learning Scholarship, Commonwealth PAD Scholarship, Commonwealth Master Scholarship, and then Commonwealth Split Site Scholarship. But we will be looking at the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship for today. The Commonwealth Shared Scholarship are for candidates from least developed and lower middle income Commonwealth countries for full-time master's study on selected courses. And this is a joint initiative from the Secretariat of the Commonwealth and then UK universities. So what you do is that the UK university will pay the living allowance and then the Commonwealth Secretariat will pay for the tuition fee and the air ticket, return ticket and the medical insurance they will take care of that so the common share scholarship and the fellowship will 
provide talented and motivated individuals the opportunity to enhance their knowledge and skills in their given sector in order to contribute to sustainable development in their home country. The whole idea is that the scholarship ends and individuals who are recipient are ordered as <laughs> part of the agreement. You have to return back to your home country so that you can help your country with the acquired knowledge for sustainable development. So you don't have to stay, you have to sign that agreement that you will return upon completion of your studies. So the areas that the scholarship look into are science and technology for development, strengthening health system and capacity, promoting global prosperity, strengthening global peace, security and governance, strengthening resilience and response to crisis, access, inclusion and opportunity. So the CSC, which is the Common Secretariat, they also offer a small number of scholarships for PED candidates. And that one is basically in the area of education. So you can also look into that. And these are the countries that are considered eligible for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. So if you are in this country and you are a citizen, you qualify to apply for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. Bangladesh, Cameroon, Eswatini, the Gambia, Ghana, India, Kenya, Kiribati, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Pakistan. You see, Nigeria and Pakistan now they have been given a uh, more slot. So the chances of Nigerians and Pakistans uh, winning uh, this uh, scholarship package is very high now. The Papua New Guinea, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Solomon Island, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, Tuvalu, Uganda, Vanuatu, and then Zambia. These are the countries that qualify to apply for the Commonwealth Shared Okay, with regards to the benefit of the scholarship, the scholarship covers tuition fee of up to £22,500. £22,500. It also covers airfare to and from the UK. You also get grant to undertake any study-related program. And then you also get tuberculosis test fee at a predetermined amount that has been set by the scholarship secretariat in the UK visa and immigration department. You also have access to SS baggage allowance on return home. So if you are returning home and you need allowance for SS luggage, they will give it to you. You also get disability support allowance for person living with disability. And then you also have scholars who are widowed, divorced, or single parent. You get first child £485 per month. And the second and the ch third child, you get £120 per month. So add this to the amount of the student. That will be over £2,000 in a month if you fall under this category. That's what I told you. This scholarship is one of the most lucrative scholarships around the globe. And then the university is expected to provide the living allowance to the student. And if you live outside London, you get £1,133 per month. If you live in London and this environs, you get £1,390 per month. So if you do the calculation for the 12 month duration of the program, those who live outside London will be getting 13,596, which is almost 14,000 pounds. And those who live in London will also be getting 16,680 pounds for the 12 months, which is almost 17,000 pounds. That is why I said you can earn 14 to 17,000 pounds during your stay. And you also have access to warm clothing because of change in uh, weather condition. You have access of 439 pounds for warm clothing. I think I did not assess this amount when <laughs> we were in UK. Probably, yes. 
I did not use that. And these are among, these amounts are set by the UK government and the scholarship secretariat. So in terms of accommodation and everything is catered for with this amount. So the scholarship is for one year. It cannot be extended or renewed. And if you are a scholar, you sign an agreement to return back to your home country so that the knowledge that you have acquired, you help in developing your country in a sustainable manner. So every individual who is awarded this scholarship is expected to return to his or her home country to help the country with the knowledge that he or she has acquired. And then some extreme cases, if you get a PhD, they can work something around. So permission could be given and then you can find your way out, but it doesn't usually happen. So I told you in 2014, myself, a uh, friend Benjamin Nano and Joycelyn were recipient for this scholarship. And that was when we got to the UK, we took some pictures and then we met the mayor of Sheffield to welcome us and then to also give us a couple of information that will help us transition in the British environment. And you see myself with the Hello, hello, viewers and listeners of Agama Media. I welcome all of you who have subscribed to the channel. And hey, if you've not done so, kindly subscribe to the channel and then hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload our videos. Today, we'll be talking about the Express Entry Visa application to Canada. What are the required documentation in order to put in a legit application for consideration will walk you through the required skilled occupation that you need to have at hand in order to apply for this visa to Canada. We will walk you through a PowerPoint presentation for you to know all the details in order to put in your application. So stay tuned and let's go for the PowerPoint presentation. Canadian government offers many routes to immigrate to Canada. And a few of the routes available include express entry, family sponsorship, provincial nominees, Atlantic immigration pilot program, and the startup visa application. So this presentation will cover only the express entry route. And the express entry route is a system that was launched in the year 2015, that was in January. And this is what the Canadian government seeks to do. The Canadian government seeks to grant permanent residency status to fill in the labor gaps through certain economic immigration programs. So all that the Canadian government seeks to do is that they've realized there could be a shortage of most of the labor force in certain key areas. So what they seek to do is to grant visa or permanent residency status to individuals with skilled labor so they could help fill this gap. And this is what they do. They consider people with uh, skilled labor category A, B, or C. That is what they seek to do. If you are a data scientist, you are an architect, you are a doctor, you are a lecturer, you are a teacher, you are a lawyer, you go into the category A. And the other people with other skills like electricians, plumbers, steel benders, carpenters, and then masons and tilers, they also go into the other category. So what the process seeks to do is that it seeks to grant permanent residency to all prospective applicants who get selected and then go through the process. So you have to first check your eligibility to see if you qualify by going through your work experience, your education, language skills for the program. But remember, your test results for the English preferably should be the IELTS. And then educational assessment should be the international standard. Job offer if you have any police certificates, if you have lived in any country for more than six months, you need to provide that. Medical examination and then proof of funds. Proof of funds here is that because you will be traveling from your 
home country to Canada, you should show that you have money for your flight ticket and then for settling in Canada because it will take time for you to adjust your uh, stay in Canada. So you need to have something on you. So you create your profile and then what you do is you enter into the pool of applicants and when you are lucky to be selected, then you will be notified to fill out the form. So you go through four stages and I'll walk you through the stages before you go for the interview. For the stage one, which is the step one I have target here, is that you find out if you are eligible and you do so by answering questions to see if you meet the minimum requirements. And the step two is that you get your documents ready. You need documents such as your language test results, the I ELT, as I said, is the most preferred. You have to show that you are eligible for that entry. And some of the documents could take long. So please make sure you plan ahead of time. Get the documents you need and then you submit your application. After you do so, you create a profile and creating the profile, you make sure you put all the info about you into the system. And this is going to be ranked, go into the ranking system and that has been assigned to points. So they use points based system to score you and based on your score, you will be given invitation to apply for permanent residency. And they will send you this invitation to apply with the highest score in the pool. And if you are lucky and you get selected and you receive the invitation, you only have 60 days to submit your application with all the supporting documents. That is why I said you should make sure you work ahead, get all the documents because you have only 60 days, which is two months to make sure you submit that. Make sure these are the documents you need, your passport, your language test results, IELTS, an educational assessment credential report for immigration. And then you need to also, if you have an offer for job, you can include that. If you don't, that is okay. Proof of funds, I said you need money to buy your flight ticket and then to settle in Canada. So you have to show your bank statement. And then if you have lived in any country for more than six months, you need a police uh, certificate to clear you of any criminal records. That is very important. Make sure any country that you have lived there for more than six months issue you with a police certificate, clearing you of any criminal records. You need medical examination report, proof of funds, birth certificate. And hey, if you are married and you want your wife to join you, show your marriage certificate. If you are divorced, you have to show your divorce certificate. If your spouse is deceased, make sure you have their certificate. And if you have adopted any kid that you want the kid to travel with you, you have to show your adoption certificate. And if you have children that you want them to immigrate to, with you to Canada, make sure you have also their birth certificates going into the system so that they will also get the opportunity to travel with you. So remember, everything comes with cost. And that is why he said that to let you know that for your applicant, you will be paying $1,325 Canadian dollars, as well as your spouse, which is $1,325 Canadian dollars. And if you have any child dependent, you will be paying $225 US dollars. And it takes six months to process this and then you get your uh, permanent residency for long as, as far as you go through the process and you get your permanent residency, that's it. You stay in Canada forever. If you want to become a, Can a Canadian or naturalized, you also become a Canadian citizen. So, but remember due to COVID-19 pandemic, the timelines could also change a little bit. So that brings to an end the presentation on Express Entry Visa to Canada. Thank you for watching and please, if you've not done so, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified for more videos and updates on how you can travel to any part of the world. And hey, I would like to put in a reminder, Quiz Arena will be uploaded in the next few days for you to enjoy 
the best of quizzes around the globe. We thank you for joining the feed on Agama Media. My name is Felix Atwine. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello, lovely people of Agama Media officially. I welcome all of you who have subscribed to the channel. And please, if you've not done so, kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload our videos. We will be covering issues relating to traveling abroad visa application processes for all the countries around the globe. And we shall also cover socioeconomic issues and entertainment. With regards to entertainment, as I speak with you, P Black, Lika, and Basby are covering Quiz Arena, which promises to be one of the best street quizzes we have ever had. We will be detailing out what we plan doing with the street quizzes, which has been named Quiz Arena. And then in the next few days, you'll be getting feedback on that. But for today, for the purposes of this video, we will be delving into the USDV uh, lottery. We have fantastic statistics to share with you. Statistics that will make you make informed decisions. The numbers are intriguing. The numbers, I tell you, will let you know that the chances of you winning the USDV lottery is now very high. Statistically, if you look at the information from the website of U.S. Department of State, it tells you in 2019 for Africa, they had a little over 11 million. In 2020, around the same margin. But in 2021, entries they had was less than 5 million. In Asia, 2019, they had 3 million. 2020, they had the same 3 million. And then in 2021, it reduced to 2.8 million. In Europe, they also have the same numbers reducing drastically from 7 million in 2019 and 2020 to 3.9 in 2021. In Central, South America and Caribbean, the numbers were within 22 million in 2019 and 2020. But interestingly, in 2021, the number reduced to half of the number, which is a and in North America, the number in 2019 was 2,864, and then 2020, it was 2,748, and then in 2021, it also reduced to 1,672. Now, looking at the data from all the continents, it tells you that there has been significant reduction in the number of entries for the DV lottery. And what is attributable to this is that the U.S. Department of State realizing that there has been a number of multiple entries of prospective applicants, decided to imbue in the system mechanism to avert that. And in trying to do that, they introduced their passport elements into the application process. So the passport elements is that you put in your passport details, the passport number, the date of issue, and then the date of is expected to expire. All these will be put into the system. And this element has prevented a lot of these agents who were doing these multiple entries from getting access to. You might have given your information to these guys who are going around gathering data for the visa process. But now, if you have already given your data to someone, don't worry. Now, the U.S. Department of State has given you the green light because you now have to put in your passport details, which is the only document these agents don't have. And they can forge anything relating to that. So now, this has reduce the number of applicants so the chances of the few because they select 55,000 winners every year so imagine before then they were let's say 30 million applicants and now it has reduced to let's say 15 or 14 million then it tells you the chances of 
these 14 or 15 people winning is very high so i will just urge all of you especially we have two months ahead of us if you do not have passport the best thing you can do is make sure you apply for your passport with immediate effect because if you have your passport details and based on the process that i'll walk you through you'll be able to apply your visa and if you are fortunate and you you get selected then i uh, trust me i'm a beneficiary of that and i can attest to the enormous benefit that <clears throat> accrue from being a u.s uh, permanent resident and if you are fortunate you go through the process you become a u.s citizen so looking at the numbers the chances of you winning the lottery now is very high so every individual on this platform should immediately apply for passport if you do not have one if you have one please do not give that information to anyone because if you have that information and the visa application process is open we will, we are here to share everything with you and we will walk you through everything as you prepare to embark on your visa journey so let's go straight into a powerpoint i presented here for you to a green card I start with sub step one you submit your entry that is when they open the application process in october you put in your entry and then selection of the entry is when the randomly select the winners and if you are lucky you go to step three you are selected then step four is where you confirm your qualification by submitting your senior high school or high school diploma or work experience we will walk you through that and then step five you submit your immigrant visa application and registration form and then you come back to step five which is the document you want to support your case whatever you want to present to the counselor to be interviewed you go through all the process so you go for the interview and then on the interview day if you are fortunate you are granted the visa and then you go through the last stages to immigrate to the United States of America. So the online registration for the DV program will officially begin in October 2021 and conclude in November 2021. Please do not wait until the last week of the registration period as the heavy demand may result in website delay. Usually that is what happened because last days a lot of people want to visit the website then that significantly affects the uh, algorithm and that delays the process so you talk about the u.s qualification the dv lottery qualification you simply must have a high school education or is equivalent and be 18 years of age or older and be a national of a qualifying country the reason is that some countries do not qualify to apply for the dv last year nigeria was exempted from that and based on the information that the department of state will release you'll be able to know if they have waived uh, that restriction for nigerians but for now it's still in place you have to have that or if you have work experience you can also qualify so these are qualifications that you need to have in order to qualify and then the good part is that the principal applicant who qualify for this pass the beneficiary if let's say you are married and you have the qualification and your wife and kids do not have those you can still input that because when you win they become your immediate family members and per the u.s immigration requirement immediate family members who also join you to immigrate to the united states of america so it comes with a lot of benefits and then if you have work experience you are qualified with a work experience you must have at least two years of experience in the last five years in occupation with the u.s department of labor definition requires at least two years of training or experience that is designed as job zone four or five and that is classifying a specific vocational preparation rating of 7.0 or higher and then the u.s department of labor provide very good information on their knowledge and skills education and training occupational characteristics 
at this very website so if you want to know more you can go to this website here and then you know more about that then you have to make sure that you submit your entries electronically we do everything online we don't do any paper application with regards to this and no late entries is allowed and if you submit one entry that's it if you put in another more entry like two more you are disqualified the algorithm will disqualify you from the system and so please desist from submitting multiple entries that was the reason why the department of state introduced the uh, passport data so that the agents that have your information if they try applying again uh, they can because they now don't have your passport details so you can get details guidelines of completing the application for going through the dv instruction here and then after you submit a complete entry you will get a confirmation containing your name and your unique confirmation number please make sure you keep the confirmation number because that is what you use to assess your result when the entry uh, process is over and then you want to check whether you have won or not you have to use the confirmation number so please make sure you put that one you can even print the confirmation from your screen and then put it on your file it is extremely important that you retain your confirmation number if you can read what has been bolding here so that tells you how important you will need that in order to find out if you have won there is no cost to register for the dv program you are strongly encouraged to complete the entry form yourself without a visa consultant visa agent or other facilitator who offers to help it's so simple very simple when they open first day we walk into it and then go take you through and you will see how easy it is if somebody else helps you you should be present when your entry is prepared so that you can provide the correct answers to the question and retain the confirmation page and your unique confirmation number so even if someone is helping you please make sure you are present so that you get to know what is going into the system because now if they input your password details incorrectly it affects your chances because should you win and your passport does not correspond with the information that my my goodness you have won but you can't process so make sure you are physically present while someone is helping you to complete the process so you can get everything you need on the website so dv 2022 program yes go go you will find very important information on that and remember individuals who submit multiple entries they will automatically be disqualified and remember you should not pay any one fee to do that so what you need to prepare ahead of the uh, october portal opening is get your passport ready before september so you have august and september try to get your passport ready take your passport picture you can take that per u.s standard any photoshop that you go will tell them is for us dv lottery they have the standard they know the guidelines and they will give you the best and then your high school certificate for the principal applicant make sure you get that and then do not share your passport details with agents as they usually embark on re-entering applications on yearly basis which leads to multiple entries if you also do submit yours submit your entry as early as possible to submit your entries as early as possible and we are here to help there is a limited period of time during which you can register for the diversity immigrant visa program each year so each year the department of state publishes detailed instruction for entering the dv program so i think with this information that you have you will be well prepared to gather all the necessary documentation for the dv lottery which opens officially in two months time please make sure you go through the process you can watch the video number of times and make sure you gather all the required documentation 
as we are back on this. I'm a strong advocate for this because I'm a beneficiary and I have friends and family members who are also beneficiaries of this. And I can tell you the benefits that accrue from this, my goodness, <laughs> is unmeasurable. Hey, you will enjoy when you get selected and officially you come here. You have a lot of benefits. So please, before I go out, Play with you to kindly subscribe to the channel and then click on the notification bell if you've not done so. And make sure you stay in tune, share with friends, colleagues, so that they also put in the best of application and win the US victory. Probably, if you need help, you can also send me a comment or email me. I'll be very, very happy to help because I know. If you put in a little effort, you also win the lottery because the statistics show us that the number of applicants has reduced drastically and with probability of winning increasing, I will advise everyone. Hello, 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 viewers of Agama Media. You are welcome to our channel. Officially, I welcome all of you who have subscribed to our channel. And please, if you've not done so, kindly subscribe to our channel so you get notified whenever we upload our video. The D Day is now. The US DV 2023 is officially open. I'll be walking you through the portal so you look into how you can submit your application. So you go to Google, just put in DV Lottery 2023 official website. And then when you put in, in as I've done, then you search. It will take you straight. Then you click on the, yes, you click on that. It takes you to the US Department of Bureau of Consular Affairs. There's, that's where the website is. And it tells you now it's open. So you see our, State Department website for 2023 DV program is now open. So officially it opened uh, about 29 to 30 minutes ago. And I just want to walk you through the process. So when you come to the website, this is what is expected of you. You go straight to the instruction section if you want to read more about that. This is for the photo to check if your photo is also okay. You can check it here. And then if everything is all right, you can begin entry from here. So look at how the website looks like. This is different from the previous video I made where people were using fake website to direct traffic to their site. So please be very careful. And then I just want to scroll through so you see everything. And then when you also get to the website, you make sure you are the right website. Look at the intro. It tells you the timeline of the entry. And then it gives you everything you have to know. So straightforward, if you go to begin entry, I'm going to put in my application with my details so that it will serve as a guide for people to know how to do it. So let's begin. It will take you to authentication code. So whatever you have to do is you have to input this very code to get access to the next stage. So it's ESYC4. So you put it in and then you submit. Then it opens for you. So straightforward, we are into the entry point. Now we are going to submit our application now. So the first question I said in our previous video is the last name. So now my last name, okay, I want to put everything in caps. So my last name will be a Tuahine. So, and then my first name will be Felix. So I have no middle name, so I click on no middle name. If you have no first name, you can also click on this one. And then I'm a male, which is number two. You go to the second one. I'm born on the first. So you start with a month. Look at what I said earlier. U.S. start with a month, day, and the year. In other countries, it start with day, month, and the year. So be very careful here now. It's telling you the month first. So if you are in other countries, make sure you are putting in the month first. As other countries have their date, the day, the month, and the year. But U.S., uh, they have it month, day, and year. So in my previous video, 
I explain that to you. So if you want to watch that previous video, you will get the understanding very well. But you can also look at this and see how to do it. So now the month is February 02, and I'm born on the 1st of February, so 01 in 1980. So I put it in 1980. Good. So if you put it eight in like this, and it asks you, city where you were born. So enter city only. Do not enter any district, uh, county, province, or state. So if I'm born in Kumasi, I'll just put in Kumasi in. Nothing else. Put it Kumasi in. Don't write Ashanti region, Ghana. That is no. If you don't know the city you were born, you can also click on Bev City Unknown in case you don't know that. Now, country where you were born, if I'm born in Ghana, I'll just scroll down to select Ghana. Good. And then country of eligibility. So are you applying based on which country's eligibility? I told you I came out with a video this morning that in Africa, it's only Nigeria that do not qualify and other countries in Europe and Asia. So you can look at the first video I posted. So here, if you put in the country, let's see here. It says your country of eligibility will normally be the same as your country of birth. Your country of eligibility is not related to where you live, or I have explained that in the previous video. So it asking you, are you claiming eligibility based on the country where you were born? If you say yes, then you are okay. If you say no, it will ask you then which country are you claiming? But for my case, it's a yes. So this session will be disabled. And I think I'm okay with that. Now, it's asking for passport details. So we've, we've done with the first part, second part, third part, fourth part, fifth part, sixth part. And then we are going to the passport details. No, it's asking for, in order to submit your entry, you need passport details. So if I want to put it, my passport details, as my name appears, so I have a Tuahine, and then I have Felix here, then I have no middle name. So it's asking of my passport number. So you have to input your password number here. So if your password number is, let's say, G03496969, you input that in. And if your password is expected to expire, let's say 0220B, which is 20F, and then it will expire, say 2025. Go 2025, you input that in, correct. And then country that issued the password, if it's Ghana, you scroll down to select Ghana. Good. And then, good. He says there are exemptions for those who do not have password. So now look at the exemption. He says, one, I'm not required to submit password information because I'm a stateless. Okay. No nationality. That is what when they say stateless, no nationality. And then you have a national or a communist controlled country and unable to obtain a password from my government, unable to obtain a password and have received an individual waiver of this. And I think for this area, it's very technical. So I will plead with you to get your passport details. So I have input in my passport details here. Let's go to the next point. It says, entrant photograph, entrant photograph. So now you have to choose your photograph. So if you come to the picture column, you can select U.S. picture, uh, password picture. Let's I put in U.S. US password picture. I open, and then my picture is uploaded here. My picture is uploaded here. Now, if the picture had problem, it would have rejected it and tell me I should upload another one. But now this one is okay, so it has picked it up, so we can go from here. So here you have to put it your mailing address. If you personally do not have a mailing address, you can put off care of, uh, care of let's say, any name. You can put it. Let me put in Albert uh, Ofori Ankoma. Yeah, so I'm assuming I have no address. So I put it 
uh, Abeto Fori and Koma. And then uh, I put his address, let's say, is a uh, plot or BPO box, whatever you want to put it in. 